guys, welcome back. I am Tebello Motswane, your host, and I'm speaking to you in my capacity as your favorite sister-in-law. So, um, today I would like to revisit the topic of customary marriages. Now, those of you who follow me on social media know that this is my favorite topic. I am married under customary law. I have registered my marriage at Home Affairs. Obviously, I would have because I'm a lawyer. <laughs> but um, I basically just want to... I'm going to keep on preaching this until I've removed the misconception between civil marriages and customary marriages. Because a lot of women, I find, are starting... Well, a lot of women tend to walk away with nothing because the families of the ex-husband or whatever the case is would have bullied them and denied that there ever existed a marriage between the parties. And obviously, I just think that that is wrong, that women always find themselves on the back foot especially um, in instances where the husband is deceased and now the family does not want to give a portion of the estate which rightfully belongs to the customary law wife to her. Obviously then it, um, they then bully her and her children or just bully her and want to take the children because the children belonged to the man, whatever the case is, we all know that there's generally drama um, amongst especially black people if a man has died without a will and if a man especially didn't register his marriage or get married under civil law at home affairs, whatever the case is. Excuse me, as a point of departure, I want to discuss the requirements of a customary marriage. And as per the Recognition of Customary Marriages Act, I just want to touch on, you know, the requirements which are looked at for before the court or before anybody actually can declare that a customary marriage has indeed been concluded. So as per the act, both parties must be over the age of 18, i.e. husband and wife to be prospective parties. Uh, both must have consented to the marriage, that's very important, and both should obviously know that um, what they're getting into is a marriage. Uh, then the act goes on to say, you cannot be married under civil law and then conclude a customary marriage. So this is very important, especially men who are, you know, married to one woman under civil law and then at a later stage want to take another woman customarily. Obviously that is the case with a lot of women. I've seen that myself. A woman will come to me and say, no, there is a legal wife, but I'm the traditional wife. And I'll be like, what do you mean there's a legal wife? What she means is that, no, there's a wife where a marriage has been concluded under customary law, excuse me, under civil law, and she has now been lobolled, so that makes her the traditional wife. That is incorrect, because under our law, you cannot be married under customary law, actually. You cannot be married under civil law and customary law, because civil law only recognizes monogamous marriages, whereas customary law recognizes polygamous marriages. So if a man is indeed married under civil law, he'd have to dissolve that marriage first, and then conclude another marriage with his first wife, customary marriage, and then take on a second wife under customary law, because the two, customary and civil marriages, cannot exist together. So, um, yeah, so basically what I need to say is that if you have been lobolled and there is an existing wife who is married to this man under civil law, your marriage is actually invalid. Please, 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 ladies, your marriage is invalid. Um, another thing I want to stress is that um, uh, one of the requirements entail that uh, negotiations should have taken place. Negotiations followed by um, some sort of celebration um, to show that negotiations have been finalized. Uh, the wording exactly says that uh, marriage must be negotiated and entered into or celebrated in accordance with customary law very important so whether you host a small lunch after the lobola ceremony or about amokela whatever the case may be however you celebrate it um in your own custom is what will you know what will count as this requirement being met um then i know in the uh chitonga chitonga um custom a uh, wife the first wife must have given consent if the husband wants to take on a second wife uh, at this stage, I can't tell you how many other customs or traditions follow that route as well. But um, for the Chitsonga tribe especially, then a consent from the first wife is necessary. Otherwise, not necessary. But that will be a topic for another day. Alright, 
Um, so once those um, requirements have been met, you have to register your marriage at home affairs within three months of the date of conclusion of the Lobola negotiations. If you haven't registered the customary marriage, it does not mean that the marriage is invalid. I know there are a lot of women who have been married for years and they've never registered the customary marriage. That's fine. You basically just have to go to home affairs and um, explain your situation. But when you go to home affairs, go with an affidavit because they're going to ask for an affidavit of you giving reasons why you haven't registered your customary marriage within the three months. And basically in your affidavit, you'll say you didn't know and you, this has just come up to your attention and you and your partner are now looking to register your customary marriage. Very important to remember that. Um, like I've said before, if your customary marriage isn't registered, it doesn't mean that the marriage is invalid. And for all intents and purposes, you are married in community of property if no anti-nuptial contract was concluded before you got married. Um, with black people, it has to be done before the Lobola negotiations. An anti-nuptial contract must be concluded before the marriage. And if we're obviously saying customary marriage is concluded once the four requirements have been met, then um, it's only right to say that the ANC must have been drafted before the negotiations take place. Very important. If um, no anti-nuptial was concluded, then you are married in community of property. And um, the only way you can then get a post-nuptial agreement is if an application is made to court. That is also a topic for another day. Now, the issue of um, customary versus civil marriages only becomes complicated when um, you know you hear a woman say, "No, um, so and so and I we're waiting for our we've had our traditional wedding and now we're waiting for next year for our white wedding." That's when we're going to sign. So yeah, we're not yet married at the moment and whatever, whatever the case is, women love this whole, they're gonna sign during their white wedding. The problem now is that we're trying to merge Western traditions with, um, or Western culture with customary traditions. And to me that is obviously incorrect because what happens during the window period when you've um, concluded your customary marriage in June, and now you're going to do um, your white wedding in December and that's when you and your partner want to sign. If God forbid anything happens to either one of you in that six months period, i.e. he dies, I want to use the example that he dies, then what do you think had happened at the traditional ceremony you had in, in, in June? You're obviously married and the family is starting to refer to you as Makoti, meaning that if he dies, you walk away with 50% of his estate I mean, well, he's 50% share of the joint estate if no anti-nuptial contract was concluded. If it so happens that during those, those six months you are the one to die without a will, and if you had children from a previous marriage or a previous relationship who you wanted to inherit, like to be the sole beneficiaries, your husband is not going to inherit as a consequence of you guys having been married under customary law in community of property. So in order to avoid things like that happening, it's very important that A, you um, conclude an anti-nuptial contract before you get married, and B, you make sure that your will is up to date, especially if you don't want him to inherit your estate. Um, there's uh, various uh, people you can leave your estate to, obviously, or people who can benefit from, from what you leave behind. It doesn't have to be your children. It can be your mother. It can be a sibling that you want to put through school. It can be a cousin you want to put through school. It can literally be wherever, whoever you want it to be. And that's why it's called freedom of testation. In your will, you get to decide who inherits. And I can't imagine that um, if you have only known a man for, say, a year and you've only been married for three months that you would have you know necessarily wanted him to inherit everything um to the exclusion of your siblings for example or your parents because if you die without a will he by virtue of being the surviving spouse will inherit everything and your parents or your siblings who you wanted to put through school will never see a dime of your estate it's very important not to merge civil law with customary law because it gets very complicated when you know there is a window period which I have discussed.
So that brings us to the end of this topic on customary marriages. And obviously, if you'd like to find out more about customary marriages, civil marriages, and um, the importance of having an antinatural contract before getting married, you can definitely catch us at our next workshop. It will be in Johannesburg, Rosebank. We're hosting it at Adam Gray on the 28th of September from 9 a.m. to 12 midday, followed by a wine tasting session with um, Siwela Wines. Um, yeah, so you can get your tickets from Quicket. I'm going to put the details in the description box below. In the meantime, you can get in touch with me on all my social media pages. On Twitter and Instagram, it's at sister underscore in underscore law underscore and on facebook you can just get in touch with me on sister in law sa otherwise i would really like for you to email me or your queries on advice at sister in law.co.za that's a d v i c e at sister in law one word .co.za I really hope you enjoyed today's episode and if you haven't already subscribed, now is the time to hit the subscribe button and yeah, see you next time.